What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to take a look at WebRTC data channels. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a simple texting chat application using WebRTC. So in previous videos, we've already pretty much used WebRTC to go ahead and build a simple video chat application. But now using that data channel, which allows us to send any kind of arbitrary data, even stuff that's not, you know, audio or video, what we can do is we can actually go ahead and build a simple texting chat application because over the data channel, we can go ahead and send one message from one peer and then a message back from the other peer. So let's do that now. Now I will also say two quick things. Uh, number one, if you want to follow along with this video, I definitely recommend that you watch my WebRTC tutorial video. I'll leave a link to that down in the description box below, or you can find it up in the cards. Also, if you want to follow along with this video and you've already watched that other video, you can find the starter files to this video down in the description box below. So with that introduction out of the way, let's get to coding. So let's take a look at the structure of what we have so far. So as you can see, we have the uh, server.js file, which pretty much lives in the root of the application. This is where we have all the code that, you know, relates to the actual handshake to kind of uh, set up the connection between the two peers. Again, I cover this extensively in the other videos. So if you're confused with this, I definitely recommend that you watch the other video. And then finally, we also have the room file, which you will find inside of the client folder, inside of source, inside of routes. So again, that's going to be client, source, routes. You'll find the file called room.js. And this is going to be the actual file where we are going to be making our changes to get the actual texting application to work. So I've already got a lot of the boilerplate working, but together we're going to sort of take it over the finish line and actually get the data channel up and running and then have the ability to kind of listen for messages as well as sending messages from one peer to the other peer. So with that, let's now take the first step in actually making this work. And that's going to be to actually go ahead and create a data channel with our calling peer. So effectively in every single sort of WebRTC application, you always have this sort of initiating peer and then the kind of the receiving peer. So in the case of a texting chat application, the calling peer is the one that has to actually go ahead and create the data channel. So let's do that now. So right over here, we have a function called call user. That means that whoever is calling this is the one who's the initiating peer. So this create peer function, as you can see here, returns an actually created peer object. So on this peer object, we now want to go ahead and create a data channel. So let's do that now. Okay, so with this line of code, what we're pretty much saying is we're calling upon our peer object and we're calling its create data channel method. And then the create data channel method actually takes in a name of the channel because you can have multiple different channels. I think you can actually have quite a lot of channels. And so what you can do is you can actually label them so you can kind of do things with different channels. In our case, we're only going to be using the one channel. So you can kind of give it any arbitrary name. It doesn't really make much of a difference. But the point is using the create data channel method, we actually go ahead and create an actual channel that we can then use to go ahead and send and listen out for messages with. Now, it's important to note that again, since this is the calling user, this is the calling peer, only the calling peer actually has to call this method of create data channel. We'll soon see how the receiving peer actually deals with this. So now that we actually have this uh, channel created, now let's go ahead and send up, uh, set up an event listener for this particular peer to kind of be able to listen out for incoming messages and to go, then be able to go ahead and handle that event. So with this line of code, what we're doing is we're calling upon our send channel. And then it has an event done called on message, which pretty much gets raised whenever an incoming message is sent to it. And then when that happens, it's going to go ahead and call a function called handle receive message, which as of yet is not defined. So that would be the logical next step. Let's go ahead and define the handle receive message. Okay, so here we now have the handle receive message function. As you can see, it will accept an E, which pretty much represents an event. And then what we're doing is we're very simply going to go ahead and call our set messages function that we have from this use state hook call right over here. And then all we're doing is we're taking the messages array and we're going to be spreading it out, passing in the newly created message object. So each message object will pretty much have in a two keys. The first one is a key called yours, which is going to be a Boolean of either true or false. And then the second key is going to be a value, which is pretty much just going to actually represent the actual text of that particular message. Now, the key of yours pretty much will allow us to determine at render time how we want to render this message. Do we want to kind of show it as if it's a message coming from us? or you want to kind of show it as a message coming from our partner to kind of differentiate which message has been sent by whom. And so the way that we're doing this is we pretty much have a key called yours, which will be either set to false or to true. And any time that a message is actually getting received inside of the hand to receive message function call, automatically by default, it has to be that's being sent by the other person because we are now receiving it. Therefore, the yours will always get, be, um, be getting set to false. Okay, so so far what we've seen is we've kind of seen how the actual calling pair goes ahead and initiates its uh, data channel and then it has the ability to kind of listen up for incoming messages. Now let's go to the sort of receiving peer and see how it handles the actual receiving of a data channel and then the ability to kind of listen up for messages on that particular channel. So let's do that now. 
All right, so we're gonna move down to our handle offer function. The handle offer function is the one that gets raised whenever an you know, actual offer is incoming from the other calling pair. So the receiving pair is the one who's gonna have the handle offer function get called because they are basically receiving that offer and now they're gonna go ahead and handle that. And as you can see here too, we're calling the uh, create pair function, creating a new pair object. And now what we need to do is actually wanna go ahead and listen out for the sort of incoming on data channel. So again, remember, the actual create channel method only gets called by the sort of initiating pair. The receiving pair doesn't create the data channel, it rather listens out for an event of when a data channel actually gets created and then it can actually grab that channel and then listen out for some events on that very channel. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here you can see we're calling upon our newly created pair that we just created from this create pair function. And then what it has, it has this event called on data channel. And then this pretty much accepts an event argument. And this event argument has under the key called channel. So the very channel that was been created by the sort of calling peer then sort of gets sent over to the receiving peer and it gets sent whenever this on data channel event gets fired. So in other words, if the calling peer tries to create a channel, the receiving peer has an event called on data channel that's going to get raised. When that event gets raised, the callback function to that event is going to receive an argument called event, which will then include an actual property called channel that represents that very channel that the calling peer has just created. So on that channel right now, we can pretty much take the event channel attached to our own send, cur send channel um, ref. And then finally, we can also attach our own on message event listener to handle the receive message. So effectively, what we now have is we now, we now have the creating peer having the ability to actually listen out their messages. We have the receiving peer also having the ability to listen out for messages. Now the only thing left for us to do is to actually go ahead and create the function to actually go ahead and send the message. Because if you come down to our JSX, you'll now notice that we have a button here that says on click, go ahead and send the message. But of course, the send message function is not yet defined. So let's go ahead and define that now. Okay, so here we now have the send message function. And as you can see, all we're really doing is we're calling upon our send channel ref. We're calling the send method, passing along the text that we have in state. So pretty much this text area here, this message box, as you're typing in, you're pretty much going to be populating the value of our text uh, field inside of state. And then we're pretty much just going to go ahead and send that very text over to the other person. And then here we're going to go ahead and once, once again call the set messages function from our use state hook building up the array of messages again, only this time instead of yours being set to false, it's gonna be set to true because now we are the ones that are currently sending this message therefore we know that it's our own message. And then we're simply setting the text back to be an empty string so that we can go ahead and send another message if we so choose to do. And that's pretty much all the code that we need to kind of get this to work. Now let's actually go ahead and run the app and see if our application is actually working as expected. So. In order to run this app, you're once again going to want to have two terminals open. You're going to want to have one pointing to the root of the application. And when you're there, you're going to pretty much say node server.js. Then at the same time, you're going to go to your other terminal that's going to be open to the same route or to the same path, except you're going to go to one level deeper. You're now going to be open inside of your client folder inside of the root of the application. And then we're going to go ahead and say yarn start, wait for the client application to kind of come up. And then we are going to actually try to see if we can actually go ahead and send messages from one peer to the other peer. Okay, so now we're met with the sort of uh, homepage. We have the ability to go ahead and create a room. Let's go ahead and create the room. Now let's go ahead and open this link in another tab so we can actually have two peers connected to the same room. So we'll come down here, we'll go ahead and say the message hi, hit send, and as you can see, I've got my message hi. And then over here, you can see I've got the receive message hi. Here it's blue indicating that I'm the one that sent it. Here it's gray indicating that this is the one that I received it. And here I can go ahead and say hey back hit send, now it's blue here, and now it's gray here. So effectively what we've just done is we pretty much built a simple texting chat application using WebRTC data channels. Well, that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week in another video. Perfect.